Good day everyone! While new consoles have been out for quite some while now, it's still very hard to get your hands on one. So, it seems like most of us will be stuck with our trusty Xbox One or PlayStation 4 a little while longer. I personally own an Xbox One X, which is working fine, but it could use a little upgrade. Before we get into the video though, I would ask you to like this video and subscribe to our channel because it would really help us to create more of this content. Without further ado, let's get into it. Sure, the new Xboxes have better graphics, more CPU power and whatnot. But I think the most noticeable change when upgrading from the older Xbox One consoles to the new Xbox Series consoles will be the loading times. The new consoles have blazing fast SSDs. While the older ones are still stuck with a slow hard drive, the new consoles are packed with an SSD that has a throughput of over 2.4 GB per second. In order to improve our current Xbox One X, we're going to upgrade its slow hard drive to an SSD as well. Since we are limited to the Xbox SATA interface, we will not be able to get anywhere near the read and write speeds of the Xbox Series X, but that doesn't mean we can't squeeze out some extra performance. Using this cheap crucial MX500 SSD, we should theoretically be able to improve the read speeds of our Xbox by more than 5 times and the write speeds by more than 6. This means our games should be loading and saving much faster. I have measured the loading times of some games before the upgrade and will do so again after to see how much we actually gain. But before we can do that, we will have to swap out the current hard drive for our SSD. On the back of our Xbox One X, we find two Torx screws. One of them is hidden under a warranty sticker. As soon as we remove this sticker, our warranty is gone, but this Xbox's warranty is expired anyway. After removing the screws, we slide off the hood of the Xbox and start taking it apart even further. So, now that we have opened up our Xbox, we can see its components, or at least some of them. On the right side we find a big cooler. This cools both the CPU and GPU. On our left side we find the power supply of our Xbox. Finally, we can see the disk drive of our Xbox. Underneath this is our hard drive, so we will need to take it out. The disk drive is connected via a standard SATA interface and a power header. If we unplug those, we can take out the disk drive. But the SATA cable won't go loose without a fight though. All components are padded to mitigate vibration and make the entire Xbox airtight. And at last, and I will turn this thing around so you can see better, we find our hard drive. Don't try to unplug the cable from the drive yet as it is locked via the underlaying bracket. Uh, we disconnect the cable from the motherboard so we can access it with more ease. And 
here is the bracket. It is a special rubber construction to mute vibrations from the hard drive and thereby noise. It won't do anything for our SSD, but it won't hurt either. The connector of the hard drive features these two pins with which it was locked onto the bracket. It is a standard SATA connector that can be used for our SSD as well. When picking an SSD, make sure it is at most 7mm thick as that is the thickness of the standard Xbox hard drive and I don't know if a thicker drive will fit. What we still need to do before we can hook up our SSD is clone the contents of our current drive to the SSD. This drive also contains the operating system for the Xbox, so if you plug in an empty drive, it will not even start. For this process you can hook up both the hard drive and SSD to a computer via either a USB to SATA adapter or by connecting it directly to a SATA port. Make sure you know which drive is which, because we would not want to accidentally wipe our original drive yet. I've hooked up both drives to my wife's PC. If the drives are connected, they should show up in the Windows Disk Manager. As you can see here, a drive 0 is the C drive to PC, and drives 1 and 2 are the other drives. In our case, drive 1 is our SSD, and drive 2 is the original Xbox drive. Usually, your SSD will be empty, but I've been doing some more attempts with this SSD before I got everything to work. To be able to use our SSD, it's not enough to merely clone our hard drive to it. We will have to adjust the drive letters and GUIDs. Luckily, there's a script that does just that. Xbox HDD Master is a simple tool that copies our entire hard drive to our SSD. I will put a link to it in the description. After downloading the tool, we open PowerShell in admin mode, navigate to the tool and start create Xbox drive .bat. The script will first check if the original Xbox drive is available and if the required drive letters are available. If we press a key, it asks us which Xbox drive creation type we want to use. We want to replace our hard drive, keeping our original data. Option B. Next, we select the source drive. This is the original Xbox One drive. In our case, it's drive 2. Next, we need to select the target drive. In our case, this is drive 1, the new SSD. The tool now warns us this will erase all the data from the target drive, so we will have to be really sure we selected the correct disk. I'll press Y to confirm. Finally, it will ask us the size of our new drive. This is because the Xbox only supports 500 gig and 1 terabyte drives. The script will automatically lock any additional space on your drive, so there is no use in going higher than 1 terabyte. If, however, you have a 500 gigabyte drive in your Xbox, it is possible to upgrade to a 1 terabyte drive using this tool. In this case, I'll go for option B. As we can see, the script formatted our SSD and rebuilt the drive to mimic the Xbox One drive. In our drive manager, we can see the drives are almost equal, except for the letter D in front of our SSD partitions. This is something Windows adds because it struggles with duplicate partition names. If we press Y again, the script will start copying all the data from the original drive to the SSD. This might take some hours. Two hours later. So, after the script finished, I made sure everything works by hooking up the SSD and connecting the stripped Xbox to the TV. At first, I thought it failed, but I forgot to install the OSO1 update that is required after every disk swap. This update can be downloaded from the official Xbox website, and I'll put a link to it in the description. While I have the Xbox opened up, I might as well check the state of the thermal paste, since I read they use very cheap paste that doesn't last very long, and I admit the fans ramp up pretty fast. In order to remove the cooler from the motherboard, we need to remove the bottom of the case as well.
And there we have it, just as I expected. The cooling paste is all dried up and no good to us anymore. So I will have to clean it up with an alcohol wipe and replace it for something better. This is really dry, so I have to scratch it off with my nails a bit. I've been looking around and found a bit of leftover liquid metal cooling paste from a previous PC build. This could be perfect for the job, but I have to be really careful in order not to short the small condensators around the GPU die. My cooling paste of choice is Thermal Grizzly by Conductonaut, as it is one of the highest performance cooling pastes on the market and is easily available here in the Netherlands. Since this die is quite small compared to a regular CPU, I will use a very small drop of it and spread it using a cotton swab. After that, we can install the cooler and put everything back together again. To answer the question, is it possible to upgrade an Xbox One using an SSD? Yes, it absolutely is. The only question that remains answering then is if the upgrade is actually worth it. We timed some storage intensive operations of three different games before and after the upgrade to see if we improved anything and if so, how much. In our first game, Farming Simulator 19, we didn't see any notable difference in the start and save times of the game. The load time of the map, however, was improved significantly. Unfortunately, we only need to load the map once to play the game, so I wouldn't call this upgrade worthwhile based on that. In the other two games, Battlefield 5 and Call of Duty Cold War, we see significant improvements all over the board. And for these games it's especially nice since we need to reload the map every time we finish a mission or round. Most Xbox games store a lot of their progress in the cloud, even single player games. So that might be an explanation for the lack of improvements in saving our farming simulator progress. Luckily, most games save your progress in the background, so you don't need to wait for that. Another quick thing I'd like to note is that I have the feeling that the installation and download times have improved as well. This can be explained due to the max write speed of the old hard drive being way lower than our internet speed, but since we didn't do any timings on there, there's no way to prove it.